It's ironic that despite the upsurge in people taking an interest in gardening and growing their own, that gardens themselves have become increasingly barren. There is far too much compartmentalising of our attitudes towards gardens these days. Gardens have to be city or formal or modern or traditional or veggie or flowers or organic or not. This need to control our gardens and our natural spaces is having a negative effect on our ability to grow and create healthy produce and outdoor spaces, with modern gardens becoming increasingly barren despite the huge uptick in interest. There is a symbiotic relationship between growing flowers and vegetables. Growing one without the other makes little or no sense. So in this video we're going to prove why you don't need to choose between a flower garden and a vegetable garden and why choosing one or the other may have a negative impact on your results. You can see in my garden how many flowers I have, but I don't just have flowers. Increasingly I am incorporating food into the garden and that is because I'm restoring a traditional cottage garden. Not the cottage garden everyone thinks is a cottage garden packed with just flowers, but a traditional one which incorporates food crops too. The original purpose of a cottage garden, which has evolved since its beginnings in medieval times, was to pack in as wide a range of plants as possible in a small space. Back then, the peasants had the cottage gardens, not the middle classes. These small outside spaces, which they relied heavily on for growing food crops, medicinal crops and floral crops to attract pollinators and to resist pests meant that back in medieval times people grew a huge range of plants and flowers in their gardens and this was the origin of a cottage garden not the separation of pretty flower gardens and the boring veggie gardens that you see today. In fact, the idea that you choose one or the other, flowers or veggies, is in historical terms a very recent evolution. It seems to have begun here in the UK either in the 70s or maybe it was rooted as far back as World War II when we were urged to dig for Britain. And somehow this idea seems to have taken root in our consciousness that growing anything else was just taking up valuable space. Well, I'll leave that for the historians to figure out, but you can see from medieval times right up to Victorian times, some several hundred years, the symbiotic relationship between growing flowers and vegetables was understood and never really questioned until modern times. Of course then, as we became more dependent on supermarkets for our produce and lawn mowers became more affordable and widely available, we could now start to emulate the upper classes and give over our gardens and all that natural abundance and beauty for neat clipped barren lawns with small narrow borders and few alternative plants. None of us really understood the implications of doing this back then. The implications on our health with pesticides. Pesticides were not even thought of as harmful unless you actually consumed them. We never thought of the implications on our wallet. We considered all this expenditure necessary. And we never considered the impact on the environment. We just forgot about the flowers and the pollinators. And we were enamoured with our stripy lawns. At least now we have a resurgence in proper gardening, but the resurgence isn't complete, while compartmentalisation of flowers and vegetables persists. When I watch some of the vegetable gardeners on YouTube, and I say some because they aren't all guilty, but I would say more than 50% are, even some of the big super successful YouTubers, I see just green crops. I watched one today, I thought the video was filmed in winter and that maybe I'd clicked on an old video, but he had indeed filmed his video in May in the UK where I am. May in the UK is a month naturally awash with flowers in the wild, which is always a clue as to what our gardens should be looking like. If flowers are billowing in the wild, in the hedgerows and the meadows, there is an environmental, a biological, and overall a scientific reason for that. And if you ignore that because you think flowers don't belong in a vegetable garden, then you are fundamentally wrong and you need to think again. 
Not having flowers in May in a garden, veggie or otherwise, is like not having water in your pond. It's pointless. Why would pollinators bother coming? I would put money on that gardener suffering low yields or resorting to hand pollinating his crops, then putting out videos telling you how to hand pollinate your crops. May through to October at least is a time of natural floral abundance, bountiful colours and it's vital for attracting that third layer of beauty into your garden, the pollinators. Those flitting butterflies, bees, hoverflies and if you're lucky to have them, hummingbirds all these creatures go on to eat your pests and pollinate your vegetable crops and create bigger, better harvests. The beetles and other bugs that come also attract more birds into your garden who will then also eat your slugs. A garden that has none of these things is essentially a barren garden because not having those things in your garden is unnatural no matter how good you think it is. You have effect effectively created a barren environment. I feel a great deal of achievement, even joy, every time I come across a new variety of butterfly, beetle or bird in my garden. This year alone I've had new goldfinches, wrens and a new butterfly I don't know the name of yet. I've had a yellow ladybird as well as my iris beetles. Last year when the sunflowers were out I saw a huge ghostly white moth at dusk. These things are jewels in your garden, not enemies. So many of you gardeners are missing out on this magic and by not being biodiverse you end up having to resort to other more chemical pest controls which just exacerbate the problem. Along with the separation of flowers and veggies there seems to be a low-key persisting attitude that flower growing is for women and veggie growing is for men. If you are one of those people who believes this is a general truth, I know not everyone does, but there seems to be quite a few people who do, then let us look at the great artists who did not think so. Let's take Moni's garden at Giverny, just outside Paris, only a few hours drive from my garden here in the UK. His garden is also full of flowers, which is, of course, an inspiration for much of his art. Monet was famously in touch with the natural world, as can be seen in his paintings and his stunning, jam-packed full garden. Whilst the flowers steal your eyes, he did, in fact, grow food crops amongst them. From fruit trees amongst the flowers to vegetable beds nearby them. I would put money on Monet, never having to hand pollinate anything. Unless, of course, he was breeding a new variety, of course. And while we're on the subject of artists, take a look at the paintings of Klimt, Van Gogh, John Singer Sargent, Constable. The idea that flowers are for women and veggies for men seems to be another recent evolution. Monet the flower grower being a case in point, but other great artists such as Klimt, Sargent and Constable and Van Gogh were all inspired by flowers and the natural world, and in particular, cottage gardens. Klimt's painting of sunflowers complete with nasturtiums is one of my favourite paintings. And I even did a video, My Garden is Like a Klimt Painting, which I will link in the description below if you'd like to see that. And if you notice in all these paintings of these wonderful floral gardens, there is the nasturtium flower. There is a reason that nasturtium flower is synonymous with the cottage garden, and it isn't because it's a pretty flower. I cannot believe the amount of veggie gardeners who do not grow nasturtiums in this day and age around their brassicas. I just thought this was something everyone knew. Apparently not. The reason it can be seen in all the paintings was because back then, up until we all forgot how to garden, people knew it attracted the butterfly. They attract aphids away from your roses. They attract the cabbage butterfly away from your brassicas. Anybody who's had nasturtiums and who has cabbage white butterflies in their garden will know that uh, late summer, the nasturtium leaves will be eaten intensely by the offspring of the cabbage white butterfly. And that's a good thing because they're not eating your cabbages then. And then the other thing is the flowers attract other pollinators such as bees and hoverflies into your garden, all of which, of course, then go on to pollinate all your other plants. And this is why you always see nasturtiums in paintings of old-fashioned cottage gardens. 
But people seem to have forgotten the benefits of all these old ways. So I don't understand why people compartmentalise gardening. Nature shouldn't be compartmentalised. If it is, it suffers or even dies. This is why for the past 20 years in all my gardens I have sought to return to a more natural way of gardening, a way that benefits my health, my wallet, the pollinators and more broadly the environment. And remember one of the greatest artists of our time, Claude Monet, said, flowers, I must have flowers and who can argue with that? So in answer to the thumbnail that I put out there, this or this, well, my answer is have both. Grow your veggies amongst the flowers and I promise you will reap the rewards. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it and if you did don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell and share with any of your friends who might be interested. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.